Hey everyone, Andy here, and today I'm checking out the Sony F55 and their new firmware version 3.0. Uh, I've been doing lots of blogs on the firmware updates for the F55 and F5 over the year. I'm really excited to see version 3 here with all those things they promised along the way through the little timeline uh, and more, actually. So to me, this version 3 is sort of all that promise of the camera finally realized. Very exciting. So in this update, they have many small things like 720p recording mode, uh, the ability to load in scene files via an SD card, which is cool for the Able Cine scene files, uh, quad full HD mode on the 55, so 16 by 9 4K, right? Uh, the ability to play back from the raw recorder through the regular SDIs. It's a great option, too. So lots of small stuff, but they also have some really big things, which I think are exciting, namely the ability to record in a cropped Super 16 mode, uh, and the ability to add LUTs and the ability to use all the frame rates and all the modes. So those are the three big things I want to show you in the camera. So first we'll start with Super 16. Uh, you can see I have a Canon Super 16 lens on here right now. This is a, an 11 to 165 Super 16 lens. It's an old school lens. It's on there and you see this vignette, this uh, sort of porthole. Look, that's the Super 16 lens projecting its image onto the Super 35 sensor. So we get a vignette. If we uh, turn on the Super 16 mode, though, we're going to jump into the center of that sensor and look at just the center of it. So let's go into the menus to do that. We'll go into the base settings here. So this is where I'm at, base settings. And we'll go down to this image scan mode and go into uh, 2K center. Also in this mo mode, just so you know, is normal and 2K full. Normal is basically the normal 4K Super 35 image area. 2K full is the full image area, I just sort of sampled at 2K resolution, so you need that Sony low-pass filter if you're going to use that, or at least it's recommended. And the 2K center gives me that center crop. Go ahead and turn that on, and execute. There you go. Cool. Uh, and look at the image. Oh, look, oh, no longer do we have that weird vignette there. Very nice. Uh, so very cool thing, easy to turn on. Next up is the LUTs. So the camera always had the ability to do monitor LUTs when in RAW mode or Cine EI mode, uh, but now they've added the ability to do those same LUTs and even more uh, in Cine EI mode via video, right? So they basically what they've done is enabled Cine EI or Cine Exposure Index mode in regular video recording so that the SYS cards can get S-Log, just like the RAW got the RAW data, and they can still apply a monitor lookup table to the outputs. Pretty cool option. So to do that, go back to my base settings menu again and change my shooting mode to Cine EI. Uh, custom mode, by the way, still the same as it always was. Custom mode uh, is uh, regular picture profiles, things like that. Doesn't, didn't change, can't do LUTs in that mode. We're strictly going to do LUTs in the Cine EI mode. Choose that. Now I change my main operation away from RAW, previously only RAW on this menu. And we can go to YPBPR or RGB. RGB would be if you want to go to an SR codec or output RGB. I want to choose YPBPR to record an XAVC or MPEG. <clears throat> Execute. And when I do this, you'll see my raw recorder go ahead, uh, powers down. It'll you know, make a little buzz and then power down. Raw is off, but I'm still in thin EI mode. I can see it on the side of the camera because it'll, it'll tell me my exposure index here. As you can see, right? There it is. And also this high latitude setting here. And high latitude actually shows me uh, uh, the number of stops above middle gray that I have available but based on my exposure index. Pretty cool. Uh, so next to that is MLUT, but it's grayed out there. That's because it's not enabled yet. To enable the monitor LUTs, I have to go into my camera menu, and there you go. Monitor LUTs are here. So just hit the camera button twice, and you'll see it pop up. Now I can turn on monitor LUTs on the sub HDMI, which is like this one here, and the viewfinder. I can also turn them on for the actual internal recording. You have to do that in the menus. Uh, ideally here, at least in my concept is, you record S-Log to the SYS cards and you apply the monitor LUT to everything else. So I'm not going to do that, but you could. Um, <clears throat> so back to the sub-display, which is the SDIs 3 and 4, and HDMI, which is what this is getting. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And you'll see there's a nice little LUT being applied there. I'll go ahead and put it on the viewfinder as well. So there you go. Back to the camera menu again, and now I have the MLUT enabled as an option. And you'll see you have lots of options in there. Uh, and you go to the, the LUT thing here, you'll see this is the first menu item, it's called just LUT. And in there I have several preset bas basic kind of lookup tables, right? So these are uh, 1D LUTs that are preloaded in the camera. 
uh, with 709 and hyper gamma profiles, etc. Uh, these are great options as well, applied basically on top of a gamut conversion. Beyond that, I can also dial in my own custom 1D lookup tables. Now, 1D lookup table only gives you so much functionality, so much adjustment. You can create these, though, and load them into the camera through the raw view or the new one version 2, 1 and above. You can create a user gamma, essentially, or a user LUT, and load it in. But it really is just like a gamma profile or a tone curve that you can load in. I see some functionality, but not really necessary most of the time. So user LUTs are there. Beyond that, though, I really like this look profile option. Look profiles are basically 3D LUTs that are already pre-programmed in the camera. You can't load them in, but they're in there for conversion of the, the color space and the gamma into some nice looking pictures. Basically, they're really nice built-in lookup tables. And if you look, if you look at the names, LC709, low contrast 709 that is, uh, and S-Log2 and Cine, you'll recognize them from the raw viewer and from even the Resolve LUTs that were made from Sony available. Uh, they're the same looks that you have, the same LUTs that you have in post. So now they're here in the camera, giving us a nice onset conversion to really visualize what we'll see in post. So here they are. I like the Type A. Very nice. Cool option to have. There it is applied. And you can look through different ones that are there, and you get different results to see as it flashes through the different settings. Uh, and, and I just like the Type A. Uh, maybe I might actually put a lot on top of that with an external box, but this is a great place to start and, f and certainly good enough for most applications. So uh, there is the MLUT. It's enabled. 1200, it's all set up. And again, I can turn it on or off in my viewfinder if I want to get a quick idea of my, um, of my log in the viewfinder and flip it on and flip it off again really quickly if I want to do that. So that's a great option to have monitor LUT-wise. Okay, so LUTs. Very nice, needed, a uh, long time coming. Only available in the Cine EI mode, but if you're recording log, Cine EI is good. Okay, uh, last up is frame rates, right? So uh, the camera has tons of frame rate options, up to 240 frames and 2K raw. Now they're just easier to turn on and disable, etc. We can do so in the menu here. This is the, the base settings menu, that is. But here I can see my options are defined by my recording mode. In raw mode altogether, if my my main operation is raw, I'll get the full options, 1 through 240 in 2K or 1 through 60 in 4K. If I go to video mode or YPPPR, uh, recording on the S by S cards, then I get 1 through 180 in 2K and 1 through 60 in 4K. All right, so 4K sensor is always limited to 60, but in 2K, I can either go to 180 if it's going to S by S or 240 if it's going to the raw recorder. So lots of options, kind of confusing. But the nice thing is in 2K center mode here, I go to Select that. I hit the, uh, oops, hit the uh, S and Q button here, right there, and I go turn it on. I actually have the ability to crank it all the way, all the way up to 180 right on the side. So that's just 2K center crop for 16 lenses up to 180 right in there. So it's actually in this case really interesting because it's a sort of a 16 millimeter camera with up to 180 FPS right onto S by S cards, or turn that off, go to RAW up to 240. So. Lots of cool options. 4K S and Q is also enabled when you need that, which wasn't before, so it's all working. Very exciting and new stuff. Uh, they also announced version 4.0 of the, of the firmware, which is coming soon, um, next year, uh, which will enable sort of more menu controls in the side panel here, cache recording, that's a request, big requested option, as well as uh, interval or time lapse options as well. So that's all coming in the future, still ev evolution. But 3.0, finally, it's kicking butt. Lots of great options in this camera. Great to see it coming from Sony. Uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.